Come with me and explore all the Sith Lords that could have been. Sith Lords are our speciality. Welcome back to Star Wars Sublight, the channel where we like to come out of hyperspace to explore the finer details of a galaxy far, far away. There's no shortage of incredible concept art for the Star Wars prequels, and you're bound to spot a few designs that have since been repurposed, and a few that were considered too dark, even for the dark side. Let's kick things off with an early look at Sidious's earliest apprentice, Darth Maul. At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. The first glimpse we got of this Dathomirian Knight Brother was during the trailer for Episode 1, but behind the scenes the character had already gone on an extensive creative journey. While Lucas was still formulating the idea of what the Sith Lord would become, he enlisted concept artist Ian McCaig to drum up what a Sith Knight could look like in the prequel era. McCaig was enthusiastic about having the next iteration of Sith Lords be a female warrior, and so Lucas requested that McCaig put his worst nightmare on the page. And it was from this instruction that the infamous Sith Witch concept art was born. The story goes that when Lucas arrived at the regular Friday pitch meetings, where concept artists would lay out their work for the week, he took one look at this design, called it terrifying, and instructed McCaig to draw his second worst nightmare. And so this is the second most terrifying thing that Ian McKay could design. And if she looks familiar to you, that's because Lucas would eventually return to this character's concept as part of the 2008 Clone Wars animated series. Later seasons of the show called for a coven of dark side witches on Dathomir, and these ladies fit the bill. Specifically, this design would become Mother Talzin, leader of the Night Sisters and mother to Darth Maul. And if you think Darth Maul has a face that only a mother could love, he wasn't always the dentist nightmare that we saw in the final film. This rather regal image of the shifty Sith Lord was originally destined for the bin. Here he is looking less savage and a whole lot more refined. McCaig was dissatisfied with the image having drawn it in his own likeness. Frustrated, he blotted ink all over the face creating the now iconic facial tattoos of Darth Maul. And initially those horns atop Maul's head weren't horns at all. They were actually feathers, tightly bound to his skull by wire. The idea behind this concept art was to present Darth Maul as more of an intellectual threat than a blunt instrument of the Sith. Along with the softer feathers, McCaig also softened the look of Darth Maul's face to lend an element of seduction to the dark side. In the end, Lucas went with more of a physical threat to the Jedi, and we wound up with the Darth Maul that we know and love today. Up next, let's dive into the origins of Count Dooku in Attack of the Clones. Ten years on from the events of the Phantom Menace, he returned to a galaxy preparing for war, and this story calls for a mysterious former Jedi to lead a rebellion against the Republic. Early concept art for Count Dooku included women who were cybernetically enhanced, droid assassins, and marauders. This piece of concept art will look familiar to anyone who enjoys Star Wars beyond the Skywalker saga, and that's because Asajj Ventress, Count Dooku's dark side assassin during the Clone Wars, was originally a design for the Countess Dooku herself. And while this design was not the direction they went with for Count Dooku, it didn't stay on the shelf for long. Asajj Ventress was introduced to the canon quickly after Attack of the Clones in the franchise's next big outing, the 2003 Clone Wars animated series. For I am Sith. <laughs> fascinating as these early designs are, they don't quite match up with the story of Count Dooku. If Dooku was trained by Yoda and in turn master to Qui-Gon Jinn, then shouldn't Dooku be a little bit older? When 900 years old you reach, look as good you are not. This one is a concept that I haven't seen many people talk about before. It comes from the Star Wars art book concepts. While there's very little information about this sketch from McCaig, the creature it depicts is pretty fascinating. It's easy to imagine this is the creature that studied under Master Yoda centuries before the Clone Wars. Perhaps in the time between, this version of Count Dooku travelled the galaxy, falling out of step with the Jedi Code. Ultimately, this design wasn't to be, but I'm sure elements made its way into who would become the droid general Grievous. Another idea for Dooku was a species with hair like Medusa. As is the case with so many concepts so far, nothing has ever truly gone in the Star Wars universe. And these designs would re-emerge on the light side of the Force years later as Jedi sisters Tipli and Tipla in the Clone Wars. This is where the character finally took shape with a face befitting an old master. Originally a member of the Coruscanti police, 
This grizzled lady was selected by George Lucas to be the final design of Count Dooku. And while Ian McCaig's sketch was selected, George Lucas let slip that he had eyes on Christopher Lee for the role. And once the artist understood what George Lucas was thinking for the character, the designs become a whole lot more familiar. While technically not a Sith Lord, let's look at another agent of evil in Revenge of the Sith, the droid general Grievous. When Lucas announced to the art department that episode 3 would feature a brand new villain in the general of the Separatist droid armies, he said the character could be alien or droid in origin, but absolutely must come across as the enemy the moment the audience lays eyes on him. He's kind of a, a little bit of an alien in a droid shell, which is sort of an echo of what Anakin is going to become. Take a look at these designs of a general who is truly evil to the core, courtesy of Derek Thompson, Eric Tiemens, and McCaig. It was the droid-like concepts that got Lucas's attention and he asked to see more. The team pursued more cybernetic ideas, and concept artist Alex Yeager said they didn't have much more to go on, just that the character was evil and dark. A kid. <laughs> Somebody a parrot? <laughs> General Grievous. You're shorter than I expected. This soulless cyborg by Jaeger looks like it's been lifted from the Terminator franchise. It's more in line with the foot soldiers of the Separatist forces, but is ultimately lacking in ways of expression. Still, the multiple limbs is an idea that would carry through to the General's final design by Warren Fu. Warren's actually made the icon from this film. But you don't know what it means, and I kept telling him, remember what that felt like, because you're going to be telling that story for the rest of your life. So there you go, a glimpse into the creative process and a look at the Sith Lords they could have been. If you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe to the channel. Either way, I'll catch you guys in the next one, and remember, the Force will be with you, always.